Welcome to episode number 283, where I'm speaking with functional medicine gynecologist Dr. Wendy Trubo about environmental toxins. Dr. Wendy talks about her own struggles with mold and metal toxicity, celiac disease, and other health issues. We also talk about how environmental toxins can manifest into disease and tips on how to reduce and release toxins. So please stay tuned. Hi there, I'm your host Colette, and on this podcast, I will be sharing the teachings of Ayurveda, yoga, and holistic health practices. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend checking out the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. Thanks for listening, and now here is a new episode. This episode is sponsored by Mount Madonna Institute, and throughout the episode today, you will hear a recording from a graduate of Mount Madonna Institute. My name is Stephanie. I'm a graduate of the Mount Madonna Ayurveda Health Counseling Program. I graduated in 2021. I felt like it was a wonderful experience and one that um, really created some meaningful change in my own life, um, as well as in the direction of my career. Mount Madonna Institute offers the following stackable certificates and a degree. The foundations and mini courses are online courses introducing you to the fundamentals of Ayurveda. The Ayurvedic educator consists of six months of online coursework that prepares the student for a career in offering diet and lifestyle support to healthy individuals. The Ayurvedic Health Counselor is a NAMA-recognized 12-month educational program for a professional career as an Ayurvedic Health Counselor. The Ayurvedic Practitioner is a NAMA-approved 20-month educational program with additional training in pathology and disease management. The Master of Arts degree in Ayurveda is a graduate-level professional training and is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, WASC. And you can receive a $200 discount on the Foundations, Ayurvedic Educator, and Ayurvedic Health Counselor programs starting in September 2023 by using the code ELEMENTS at checkout. To learn more about these programs and to register, visit mountmadonnainstitute.org or just click on the link in the show notes. Hello, and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm very happy today to welcome Dr. Wendy Trubo, who's passionate about helping women optimize their health and lives as a functional medicine gynecologist. Through her struggles with mold and metal toxicity, celiac disease, and other health issues, Trubo has developed a deep sense of compassion and expertise for what her patients are facing. She's the co-author of Dirty Girl, Ditch the Toxins, Look Great and Feel Freaking Amazing, and has been regularly featured in Mind Body Green and Huffington Post. She is an accomplished speaker and previously had her own television show. She is on the faculty at A4M, which is the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and a speaker for their conferences, along with other national societies. She and her partner will be releasing their next book in mid-2023. Dr. Wendy, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. I can't believe you read all that. It's <laughs> kudos. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's good to give give the listeners an introduction. And I'm really looking forward to get diving into this conversation um, about environmental toxins, which is the subject of your new book, Dirty Girl. Now, in the bio that I just read, I mentioned that you had your own health struggles, including mold and metal toxicity. And I'd love if you could share with us a little bit about your own personal health journey and how that influences the work that you're doing today. Sure. I love this question, Colette, because you know it, it ultimately, something always gets your attention and it's, it's often personal. So for me, there's the part of my story I didn't know about, meaning I have terrible genetics and I didn't know that until I was, I think in my forties, but that was influencing the, the narrative of my game, of my life. And when I looked back, so the, when I was 15 and I won't tell you every year, I promise, but when I was 15, I had uh, anemia and it did not respond to iron no matter what I did. 
Fast forward to my 20s, I continued to have anemia, but now I also had other nutritional deficiencies. And I also had what I didn't know at the time was irritable bowel. I had no idea. Uh, it was because it had developed so subtly. I just thought that's how your gut was supposed to go. So that was just my my belly. And then fast forward to my 30s, I had infertility and I really hit the skids. And I, I hit a point where I pretty much head to toe, I was I was messy. I was a hot mess and I had hair loss and brain fog and anxiety and thyroid dysfunction, asthma, everything about the irritable bowel still. I was wasting. So I was very thin. I had nutritional deficiencies. I had fatigue, of course, and my periods were messed up and everything hurt, like my joints hurt. And it was only after my second child was born, my husband said to me, well, hey, you know, our insurance is changing because the, it, the he was graduating residency and our insurance was changing. And he said, before it changes, why don't you go for a consult with my my mentor, who was a functional medicine physician in the Boston area. So I went for a consult and he did this, what I considered at the time to be a huge workup. And he looked at my my minerals and nutrients, my hormones, my food sensitivities. He looked at my gut. And what I didn't know was that he was also testing me for celiac. So we um we met with him for the for the the results. And I was like, please tell me I don't have diabetes. Like I'm not gonna be able to stick my fingers. It's too, it hurts too much. And he's like, You don't have diabetes, you have celiac. And I said, Oh, my dad has celiac. He said, Well, it runs in families and it's genetic. So you probably should have been tested earlier. And I and I was like, I didn't know that. So at 35, I got my first diagnosis of an autoimmune disease and promptly went gluten-free. Mm-hmm. And I felt a lot better, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. So I started to un- uncover the years of dysfunction that had happened in my gut because celiac is the end result, right? You know, I had an antibiotics as a child multiple times. I was, uh, I mean, geez, I was always on antibiotics for something. So the gut was pretty wrecked and I had candida and I had terrible, terrible dysbiosis. And I had then celiac on top of that. So going gluten-free was the start. It wasn't the end. That's only the first, that was like, think of it like a camel's back. That was hump one. And then hump two is, uh, you know, fast forward, I'm 48 and a half and we go on this amazing trip. We spend a week in Paris and I come home. After I come home, I gain nine pounds my hair starts falling out in droves, like clumps. And I have a rash on my face that like scratching never, never made it better. It was Mm -hmm. awful. And I couldn't figure out what's going on. And it took me a few months. And finally, what I learned was that when Notre Dame burned, it released 500 tons of lead dust into the air. And the closer you were to Notre Dame when it burned in France, the more exposure you got and the farther away, the less. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And I spent a week right there the week after Notre Dame burned. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard this report and I looked at my husband and I was like, I got a lead exposure. I mean, we all got a lead exposure, but I'm the one who's sick. So we uh, we tested me, and I was I was high for lead and mercury. Wow. I had mercury fillings at the time, and then I did some more testing and found that I had five strains of mycotoxins, which are the strains of mold in your body that put out these toxins. And then I did the whole rest of the testing and found I had a long list of environmental toxins like nail polish, uh, the toxins from nail polish, flame retardants, plastics, phthalates, you name it. I had like 75% of them. And I looked at my husband and I said, I'm such a dirty girl. And we're writing that book because I was in functional medicine long before this, you know, getting my diagnosis inspired me to be a functional medicine provider. And yet we eat organic, I exercise, I slept, and yet I have all these toxins. So if I have all this and I and I work on it, what does everyone else have? So we wrote the book to get the word out because we are essentially having death by a thousand cuts every day. And I feel like on my watch, I don't want that to happen to any more people. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, you were so vigilant about your health. You worked yeah. as a functional medicine practitioner and that you know, you were so aware, but yet we're exposed to these environmental toxins in our homes, in our work, as we're out and about. So what are some of the most common types and, and sources of environmental toxins? I love this question, Colette. Okay. I, I would recommend we separate this into three major buckets. 
Great. Because as humans, we like to categorize things and it's easier to think about them in categories. So the one major, they're all major, but the one major category is the toxins that we get from what we put in our mouths. So the food and the drink and the alcohol, all of those, unless they're certified organic, they have pesticides, herbicides, sometimes heavy metals in them. Uh, if you know, if, if your farm is in a flight path from an airport, it's going to have gasoline fume in it. So there's a lot of ways you can get exposed. So the first way you get exposed is what you put in your mouth. Think about when you drink from a plastic water bottle, you get exposed to the toxins that that plastic has put into your water. Those are endocrine disruptors. The and and they uh, that right there is a toxin. But then you can get toxins from alcohol, particularly wine, has a lot of pesticides, herbicides. So the first category is what we eat. And let me just pause there in case you had any questions or comments or anything you wanted to dive into on that. No, it's great. I think putting this into three categories is great um, because it is overwhelming this information for people. And it's kind of scary in a way too. how much exposure we have. However, the more awareness we have, the more information we have, the better education we are on the subject, the more we can implement changes in our own lives for our families and, and spread this information as well. Totally. All right. So let's get more information. And, and by the way, Colette, we... Uh, how do I say this? You're never going to be perfect. So mm-hmm. when you listen to this, every every person listening is like, oh, I got to get going and I got to be perfect. No, you just have to get going. Get started. Do, do better today than you did yesterday and the day before. It's a process. It's a journey, not a destination. You're never going to be quote unquote done. Absolutely. Okay. So have some compassion for yourself because we're all working hard. So the uh, bucket two is the stuff we put on our bodies that is, oh, and by the way, the stuff in our bodies includes um, mercury fillings. Mm. So if you have, if you have silver fillings, those are 50% mercury by weight and they're putting out mercury, they constantly off gas. They never stop off gassing until you remove them. So mm. anytime you chew, eat, drink, anything, run, run your tongue over it, you're getting exposed to mercury. All right. Going back to the on you category. This is for women, mostly women, the, the, toughest category because it's all the things that we're putting on our body. We're not necessarily eating it, but we are, think of them from the moment you get up in the morning, you wash your face, whatever you're washing your face with, you get in the shower, wash your hair, condition your hair, style your hair with products, do your face, put on whatever you put on your face, as well as all the makeup on your face. Then maybe you spray a perfume and you put some lotion on, then you put clothes on that were at the dry cleaners. By the time you've walked into your kitchen, you've likely been exposed to more than 250 chemicals in any given day. And that's particularly tough for women because we you know, we apply all these things to ourselves. And and the reason it matters is our skin is an amazing organ. It's our largest, largest organ, and it can absorb toxins and it can help us remove toxins. So the, the things we're applying to our skin have a lot of opportunities to expose us to, to toxins, particularly if you are into what I'll call cheap beauty and you're buying things that were made in other countries that don't have necessarily good controls, you have no idea what's in that. And it's been shown that they have been contaminated with all types of things, including but not limited to pesticides, glyphosate, lead, to, um, different heavy metals. So, so you really want to be careful about what you're applying on your body. I think this is great information because I think people are aware about food and buying produce that's organic and being very aware about that and the pesticides sprayed on, on food and crops and GMO and so on. But products is one that I don't think people are too aware of. I think there is a, a rise now in, in the market of vegan products and products that are, are natural. But, uh, it is a, a big issue because as you said, our skin is our largest organ. It's porous. It's there as a protective barrier, but it is porous and everything. Our skin is literally digesting what we put on it, right? Yeah. And it's so funny you talk about the vegan products because when you think about vegan leather, it's made of plastic. So right. it's actually, not healthy for us and all of these vegans. So, so it's really a tough call because yes, you want to be good to the universe and the earth and 
making these vegan products is not good for the earth. Just, just unless it's made out of something that is uh, compostable, but we probably wouldn't use it for our, our, our beauty products, our bags, you know, right. our, our leather belts or quote unquote leather belts or bags. So it's, it's a tough call. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Third category. Third category is the toxins that are around us. This is a huge category. So let me try to break it down. It's, it's anything that is, we put our body on. So think of your furniture and your bed, the office furniture, the chair you sit in, the car you sit in to air quality, water quality. I'll put into the, what we put in ourselves. So the, the quality of your water should go in there, but then there's what's in your air. Are you getting exposed to any blowback from living near a highway or a farm or a golf course or a manufacturing plant, all of which degrade the quality of your air and could potentially expose you to pesticides, herbicides, glyphosate, uh, heavy metal contaminants, depending on what they're using. These are all going into your air. And then this also goes for air fresheners, the products we clean our house with, what our house is made of and the toxins in that. Think of paint, which has volatile organic compounds. So you want to get no VOC paint. That's the reason. So it's it's this long list of ways that we get exposed to toxins. And all of them are essentially, if you boil it down, they all either make you fat, sick, or nearly dead, to coin the term of the guy who did that movie. They, They impact our ability to be healthy get pregnant, carry properly to term, lose the weight we want to lose, have our brain function, not get diabetes, not get heart disease, not die in our beds with dementia or Parkinson's or another degenerative disease. And it also contributes to um, autoimmune disease. So it's really in every way making us sick. And we go through our days and I called it death by a thousand cuts because even when you're quote unquote perfect, you're still going to get exposed. Well, that's it. I mean, we have these onslaught of toxins in every aspect of our lives. And as you mentioned there in these three categories, and we can't completely shield ourselves. I mean, we'd have to lock ourselves up in a, in a confined room and not go outside. However, we need to be aware of trying to keep our body as clean as possible so that this onslaught of toxins doesn't overtake us, create imbalances, and maybe perhaps down the line, those imbalances manifesting into disease, right? Now, you mentioned a lot of diseases there. Can you take us on a a journey of disease or an imbalance that can be created from toxins? Like you mentioned, the endocrine disruptors in in the water from the plastic water bottles Mm -hmm. and how that could manifest into something like infertility, or can you give us a, an example of something like that? Yeah. Let me start drawing the lines from toxin Mm -hmm. to problem. What you want to keep in mind is that every person, every person shows up with inflammation differently. So the, so the lines I'll draw may not be your lines, but they, but they occur over and over. And everyone will manifest in a different way. So let's talk about let's talk about women's issues because you know half of us on the world are women. So mm-hmm. it's pertinent for us. So when you are exposed to endocrine disruptors, you get them by oh gosh there's a huge huge range of things. So you get them through your beauty products. You get them through drinking from single use plastic water bottles. You can get them from heating up your food in a plastic container and then eating from it. All of these ways are ways that the endocrine disruption, the chemicals transmit into what we're putting in our body. So when it gets into our body, our body recognizes this like it would recognize uh, our hormones. It looks kind of like our hormones to the body. So it sits in the receptors. It it acts like a pseudo hormone. And what happens is your body still has to process it. So when your uh, endocrine disruptors are sitting in the in the receptor for estrogen or progesterone, your body thinks it's it's supposed to be actin and active. This throws off the body's hormone balance. Okay. Now, when you drill into this, you, all hormones are excreted in the same way as as well as the endocrine disrupting. Uh, substances. So when you're trying to get rid of them, the liver, let's back up your liver, when it's trying to get rid of your hormones, 
I'm sorry, I've gone off on a tangent, Colette. I'm going to, I promise okay. I'll circle back to yeah, how yeah, this no. relates. But <laughs> so when you're trying to get rid of your hormones, you go into the liver and it's in f- two phases. Phase one is typically quite rapid, especially for women. And phase two is where you take that toxin and you bind it to make it water soluble and get it out of your body. Now, in the process of taking it from fat soluble before it hits the litter, liver to water soluble, getting out of your body, phase one makes it more toxic. So you have a toxic intermediate, which is called a free radical. And nobody likes free radicals because they're inflammatory. Phase two then binds it. If you're faster in phase one than two, you're piling up all these free radicals and then you can't do anything with them. So now what happens, and I promise I'll come back to the impact on our hormones, but now what happens is you store these toxic metabolites in your fat cells because obviously you don't want them floating around your bloodstream. That's not safe for you. You want them to be put away. So you process them into your fat as a storage depot. Okay. Think of fat like a storage depot. So now going back to the impact that these pseudotoxins, these, these endocrine disruptors are having, as your body starts to recognize them, it's throwing off the hormone balance. Everyone goes down a different pathway, but if you're going down the hormone dysfunction pathway, you will wind up with things like heavy periods, irregular periods, acne, insulin resistance metabolic syndrome, polycystic ovarian syndrome, fertility challenges, bad periods, you know, periods that you're like, oh, it's horrific. I bleed super heavy. Fibroids. Fibroids are intrinsically an estrogen dominant state. And when you have fibroids, you know that you're estrogen dominant because you've spilled over into making your fibroids grow. So Fibroids are absolutely an uh, endocrine disrupting state, disruption state. And then I would say the end result of endocrine disruption would be what we think of as breast cancer or uterine cancer because you've had unopposed estrogen acting on the breast and the uterus for years and years. And it has this, the tissue isn't balanced out. So it goes into the inflammatory state of cancer. That's like the end result. Thankfully, most of us don't get there, but we get to the other places where we have heavy dysfunctional infrequent, too frequent menses, difficulty conceiving, insulin resistance, diabetes is on the rise. It it directly tracks back to endocrine disruption and toxins. Mm, and what about neurodegenerative disease as well? Yeah, that too. <laughs> so there's a correlation there with the rise in toxins in our environment and the rise in in dementia and yeah, dementia is rising at a ridiculous rate. It's rising faster in women actually. And so what's so interesting, there's not one single cause for dementia. There's numerous tracks that we can walk down and they include your endocrine system, meaning are your, do you have enough hormones? If you don't have enough hormones in your brain, your brain's not going to work properly. Mm -hmm. Do you have an infectious cause like Lyme disease or Babesia? These can, these can fundamentally alter people's brain function. And we always want to make sure that that's not happening. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have toxins? Cause that's an, this toxins are a major category for dealing with, uh, degenerative disease and, and also Alzheimer's. And then, gut dysfunction. Is your gut working or not working? We know that the gut is the source of health. And so if your gut is dysfunctional, your brain isn't going to work properly. Mm-hmm. So those are the big pathways we walk down, but but toxins is a massive one in that. Right. And so toxins are creating the inflammation. And as you said, each person may manifest mm-hmm. a disease differently, but there's toxins and inflammation at the root. Totally. You nailed it. I felt the faculty at Mount Madonna had a wide breadth of knowledge and great information in lectures, as well as meaningful discussions that we had with our classmates who also brought so much to the table. Um, The curriculum was quite rigorous and there was plenty of support with that curriculum. Anytime I needed help, I was able to access help from the moderators of the classes and um, I felt extremely supported. And that was honestly a real boon to the program itself. Mount Madonna Institute core faculty, course instructors, and assistants maintain ongoing contact with the student throughout the course of study to provide valuable support. The instructors are classically trained in India and or have many years of clinical and teaching experience in the U.S. 
To learn more, visit mountmadonnainstitute.org. And don't forget about the $200 discount I mentioned earlier. You can check out all the details in the show notes. And so how to protect our bodies, right? We have these toxins stored away in these storage depots of the fat cells. And therefore, because our liver is overloaded with try, trying to process through all these toxins, so it's putting it away in the fat cells just to keep our bodies safe. And so can you take us through what we can do um, in order to reduce the these toxins, obviously, we have to reduce, you know, be mindful of our food and environment and what we're putting on our body, but also what we can do to release these toxins. Yeah, this is a great part. I love this part, Colette, because it's pretty depressing when you really think about how many toxins there are and what they're doing to us. It's very mm-hmm. challenging and depressing. Mm-hmm. So this is the ha- this is the happy part where we go, okay, there's good news here. Good. So, so, okay. You mentioned some of the things. So the things we can do one to the very best of your financial ability and your budget, do your best to eat at least, how do I say this? At least avoid the dirty dozen, which is the mm-hmm. list that the environmental working group puts out. Mm-hmm that is the top 12 foods that are the dirtiest. And then it also puts out a list of the clean 15, which are the 15 foods that if you can't afford to buy organic, you can reasonably buy it not organic and not pollute yourself too much. So start with those 27 foods, right? And try to try to eat them organic or get the ones that are okay, not organic. Then put put a ban on plastic water bottles and plastic storage containers for your food because it inevitably leaches hormone disrupting chemicals into your body, which you don't want. Mm. That's that's the start. And then the second thing I would say is as you start to run out of beauty products, that's a really great opportunity to level up into something cleaner. Going back to the environmental working group, they have lists of, uh, they, they have uh, skin deep, database, which looks at all of the different products. doesn't have every brand, but has a lot. There's also Think Dirty, which is another app you can put on your phone. So anytime you're running out of a product, look up the product you're using to see where it lies on the rating scale and then level up to the best of your ability. Keep leveling up as you run out of things. Then you asked, how do you improve the body's ability? So this is this part is the uh, it's super easy. It'll save your budget, but nobody likes it. <laughs> Most people won't <laughs> want to do it. And that is stop drinking alcohol. And the reason is that alcohol itself is a glass of poison. And your body knows, your liver knows that when you're exposed to it, you need to focus exclusively on dealing with that because otherwise it could kill you. So when you're dealing with alcohol, you're not dealing with the toxins. And women don't process alcohol generally, big broad brushstroke, we don't process alcohol as easily as our male counterparts. So women can't drink as much and still be healthy compared to men. Now, even the amount for them is less than most people think, but for us, because we're drinking poison, it distracts the body off of doing detox because it's immediately pulled into a bigger crisis, which is the alcohol to process. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? A hundred percent. And our liver is already under enough pressure with all yeah. these toxins. And I think as well, it's good to highlight the fact that if you're in the years of perimenopause and menopause, that alcohol can really create havoc as well with symptoms through that that period of time. Is that correct? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm I'm on the other side of it and I don't drink alcohol. However, I have a lot of patients who drink alcohol and alcohol has been shown to alter your sleep and it can it what's interesting is it alters your adrenals it stresses the adrenals and the reason that matters in perimenopause and, and menopause is that when you're going through this process as your ovaries do less and and are less reliable and and ovulate fewer times in the course of a, a year your adrenals in theory should pick up the slack and they should put out your your progesterone, your testosterone, and your estrogen in the form of estradiol. However, if your adrenals are stressed and they're stressed from stress and standard American diet and sugar and alcohol and not getting enough sleep and not getting enough movement, there's a lot of things that stress the adrenals. Even our thoughts can be stressful. 
then your adrenals don't have essentially the bandwidth to produce the hormones that they need. That's actually our next book. And I realized like any good construction project, we're delayed. It's not till 2024, but our next book is all about menopause and how to transition gracefully into it. So, um, so the reason that alcohol is so stressful is it, it stresses the adrenals. And if the adrenals are just barely hanging on and then you stress them, they can't, prov- they can't produce your estradiol and your testosterone. So now you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a night sweat and your hot flashes are worse. And you say, oh, this perimenopause. But in reality, it's, it's more about what your adrenals don't have and what you're putting in your body than about the perimenopause itself. It, the perimenopause is showing the issues because your body is stressed. Mm. Right. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Your body is is under pressure already. So yeah. now it's highlighting these issues. So it's something that especially as women, we have to be aware of as we're go, as we're aging as well, Mm -hmm. that, you know, alcohol puts a lot of pressure on the poor liver, which is under pressure right now. If I just did a recent podcast talking about um, the different tissues in Ayurveda and, and highlighted the liver and, and the amount of functions it has in the body and Mm -hmm. how we should support our body and think of our body in that way, you know, that it's, it's working so hard for us every day. It's miraculous and what it can do. And so we need to support it and also take time to cleanse the body as well and, and cleanse out those fat soluble toxins that are stored in the fat cells. This is a perfect moment for me to jump in to tell you about my upcoming discounted group cleanse starting April 21st, 2023. We go through this cleanse as a group in a private community, supporting each other and holding each other accountable. However, even though it's a group cleanse, you still get a tailored cleanse for you and your lifestyle because it comes with a 90-minute one-to-one online consultation with me, where I will check on your current health status and tailor the recipes, the yoga, the mindfulness, the self-care, etc., to you and making sure that it fits into your lifestyle also. And in this cleanse, we're going to get rid of any accumulation of toxins in the fat cells. And that includes physical and emotional or undigested toxins. So if you're interested in joining us on April 21st, click on the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and go to the events tab for the discounted group cleanse. If that date of April 21st does not work for your schedule, you can choose a private cleanse. Same structure, comes at a nine minute consultation. You just get to choose your own dates and you have me one-on-one for private support. So register today and book your 90 minute consultation so that you can feel light, clear, and energetic. Okay. Let's go back to my conversation with Dr. Wendy. And you talked about, as mentioned in your book as well, the mercury fillings, things like Mm -hmm. that. Yes. There's so many things you can do. So I think you sort of take it if you're able to get your mercury fillings taken out by a biologic dentist, do that. Uh, I got mine taken out actually just about a year ago and it was really difficult. I, 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 I did two on one day. I had three left. I had two on one day and one on another. And I, I found that I really needed to take pretty much the day and a half off because it was so stressful for me. Mm-hmm. And not everyone's going to respond the way I respond, but I would highly recommend going to a biologic dentist and getting them taken out because even even before you wake up in the morning, you're getting exposed to toxins. So that's one massive way. And then I always say, if you're in the market for a bed, only do this if you're in the market, right? If you just bought a bed, ignore what I'm going to say. But if you're in the market for a bed, I would recommend looking for a bed that is does not contain flame retardants because flame retardants are an endocrine disruptor. So the And you spend hopefully eight to nine hours a night in your bed So if you're getting exposed to chemicals in your bed, that's another source of stress. So try to start peeling off. And we go through this in the book, right? How to start peeling off all the ways that you can clean it up. And then you just said something really brilliant, Colette, which is how do you... How do you improve the liver's ability to detox? And there's tons of ways. So, so, okay. So the food you eat, you know, don't, don't overload the liver, but also uh, improving minerals and nutrients and uh, the cruciferous vegetables, 
the B vitamins, these all support the liver's ability. N-acetylcysteine and alpha lipoic acid, which support the liver's ability to make glutathione, which then supports the liver's ability to get rid of toxins. All of these things can assist the liver. And then simultaneously don't stress the liver by drinking and try to avoid sugary processed foods because they convert right to sugar and that spikes your insulin. So you can get into the rat wheel that way too, uh, of stressing the body and stressing the adrenals and throwing off the endocrine system in another direction. Great. Yes. The more we can support the liver, the better and, yes. um, and really make sure that it's functioning well. Um, because as we say, it is under a lot of pressure with this onslaught of toxins. And I think it's great that if people are going through this project, because it really is a project totally. of looking at their, at their toxin exposure and breaking it down into those three categories that you talked about, what we're taking in, food, a drink, and, and so on, and then the products, and then the toxins around us in our furniture. And I think it's a great advice that you give that when you're replacing things like your nail varnish, nail varnish has toxins in it, and it's going to soak into your, again, into your nail bed, into your skin, into your bloodstream. So the next time you go to buy nail varnish, you know, summer is coming. Um, look at organic varieties of nail varnish with less chemicals in them, or go to a beauty salon that has good quality products. So you really have to look at every aspect and to do a little bit of research. And I do think the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, they do an amazing job. They have a huge amount of products in there and they tell you exactly what's in them and they they grade them as well. So I think that's amazing. Right. Is there any other advice that you can, uh, I know it's a, a huge topic. You wrote a whole book on it. So you're doing a follow-up book. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any other advice that you can give the listeners today to protect themselves? Sure. Yeah. There's tons that you can do really. So uh, a 1989 study in Massachusetts, I'm I'm from Massachusetts, so I'm partial to things that happen. So go Boston. A 1989 study showed that one in six deaths were attributable, or res- that that air and water quality were responsible for one in every six deaths. So, you know, when you look at the co- the whole thing about toxins, it can feel very overwhelming. But if you dial it back and say, okay. I'm going to deal with my water quality and my air quality. These are two concrete things that you can address. And what I say is improve your air and water quality to the very, very best of your budget. Whatever your budget allows for, that's where you want to land. So get the best in class in your budget. And that would mean either get a countertop water filter or a point of use water filter or a whole house water filter, depending on where you fall on that budget. And then for air, I would recommend filtering the air that you sit in the most of time. So in your office area and your sleep area, filter those airs and get your air tested to see what's going on in there. As long as you live in a place where the air outside isn't too polluted, open your windows and get fresh air in. So these are, I mean, think about it. One in six deaths, that's like 18% of deaths. So it's crazy. So Mm -hmm. you have control over this and you have agency. And then when you start to layer on, I think it's important that we talk about the foundations of your health. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if you don't sleep and move your body and sweat and de-stress and have relationships that work for you, your body will not detox because detox is a luxury. In the body's view, detox is, is what it does when it's not running from a lion that's going to eat you. Right. So it's a luxury. Detox is a luxury behavior in your body. So what you want to make sure you do is give it the opportunity to do detox. So get enough rest, sweat, move your body, Give your body the food it needs to do a good job. Poop every day, at least once in a nice long tube, yeah. and then manage your thoughts. We have around 60,000 thoughts in a day, and most of them aren't very nice. And so if the, and the ones that are aimed at us can set off a cascade of adrenal response, which then stresses the liver. So, and stresses the adrenals. And so, and shuts down detox. So what we want to make sure we're doing is managing our thought processes and our relationships with ourselves and others so that 
the body is essentially primed and supported and doing its detox job. It wants to do its job. It's just overwhelmed. Absolutely. The body will heal itself given the right environment, right? And you're, you're totally definitely talking our language here in, in the world of Ayurveda. And I know functional medicine is similar. It's a holistic approach. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really, uh, these are like entwined practices, actually. Absolutely. And on that note, can you tell us a little bit more about functional medicine for people who are not familiar with that? Sure. I think it was named, I'll have to look it up. I think it was named because a lot of medicine can be very dysfunctional. And so functional medicine takes the philosophy that there is a root cause for all of your issues. And when you get to the root cause, the body will be able to heal. So either you have too much of something like a toxin or a food that's acting like a toxin, or you have too little of something that your body needs to be in balance. So figuring that out will give your body what it needs to be vital, vibrant, healthy, able and interested in intimacy till you're at least 100, and that every decade gets better than the one before it. And when you look at it like that, essentially what you're saying is you don't develop cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, degenerative disease, autoimmune disease, uh, irritable bowel, asthma, anxiety, you don't get those things. And if you have those things, you start to peel away the issues and challenges that are causing it so that you can, instead of it occupying 80% of your field of vision every day, it occupies maybe five to 10% that, that it becomes much less on the, on the priority list because it's not an issue any longer. Absolutely. And it really is about informing ourselves, taking charge of our own health as well. Mm -hmm. And as we just said, you know, given our, we'll give our body the right substances, the right, we're, we're intaking good quality food, air, water, using good products, have a good, healthy home and environment. Our body will be in a great place to heal itself. Yes. The body really does want to be in balance. And sometimes when you've hit a point where you're overloaded with toxins and you're storing a lot of them in the fat, in addition to giving the body what it needs so it can do its sort of basic function, you may need to work with an advanced pr practitioner who can help you get those toxins out of you. This is not something you want to do on your own. This is not a DIY weekend event. This is a, this is a big sort of journey project that you do. And it is absolutely possible to get those toxins out and to be healthy and tilt the scales. And sometimes you might need additional additional support. You know, it, it might not be possible to do on your own. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the, the services I provide is, is helping people through that digestive reset cleanse, we call it. But it is important. I'm glad you brought up that subject is that it's so important for people to get assistance in this because when you're releasing toxins into the body, when you're getting rid of mercury fillings, you're releasing those toxins into the bloodstream. So you need a lot of support. And it also needs to be you know, holistic cleansing as well, that you're making sure that your mind is in a good place, that you have good self-care practices, mindfulness practices, and the, the right food for your constitution. Yeah, 100%. I would echo that. Absolutely. Before we finish up here, Dr. Wendy, is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? I think it's really important to remember that that each person listening does have some control over this. It can feel really overwhelming, but the trick is start somewhere. Start with your food, right? Level up on the food and water and air. Do those three things, and that's a huge success. And then start to chip away at the other ways in which you're getting exposed. And don't forget, you totally nailed it. Don't forget the way you think and the relationships you have and sleep, all of the and your gut health, all of those absolutely play into optimizing the rest of you and doing detox. So it is important to make sure that you focus on all of it, not just that sort of winnowed in, I have to get rid of the toxins. Well, mm. you have to take care of yourself. Big picture. Absolutely. And you mentioned earlier, Dr. Wendy, about having self-compassion. I think that's really important on this journey and curiosity. And rather yeah. than getting overwhelmed by all this, because you know we know it's a lot of information, but it's about having curiosity about your body and wanting to protect your body and have longevity and good health so you can have vitality throughout your years. So I think it's really take your time on this. It's a journey. It's a journey of a lifetime. And Dr. Wendy's given great advice here is like, as you start to replace things, look for better options and, and chip away at it. As Dr. Wendy says, it's, it's such great advice. Totally.
I uh, thank you. Yeah, it really of resonates course. for me. Like I try to do it every day. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a beautiful journey too, because it's very empowering for you as the individual to really be in charge of your health and feel like you are in control. So sometimes in this world, we can feel like things are a little crazy. Uh, so that the more that we have, you know, a good solid foundation with our health, self-care, mindfulness practices, we can have a greater buffer to the stresses around us and our body will be in a good, calm place to heal itself. Totally. You said it beautifully. You said it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Dr. Wendy, before we finish up, I'd love for you to tell people where they can go to find out more about you, your book, A Dirty Girl, Ditch the Toxins, Look Great and Feel Freaking Amazing. And uh, maybe give us a little info on your book coming up in 2024. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the best way. So our, the book, the book's on Amazon. If you go and search Dirty Girl and you don't put my name or that it's a detox book, you're going to probably go down the rabbit hole. So I would recommend oh, including yeah. something that <laughs> indicates to Amazon or the web that you're looking for the book, not something else. That's one. <laughs> and then you are, are, we have, we have a national brand called Feel Freaking Amazing. And that's the name of our podcast. And then within that, we have our Dirty Girl Detox brand, which is all about detox. And then people who want to work with us as clients, we have the Five Journeys Clinic, which is located in Massachusetts. So there's, and then I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love for people to follow and reach out and get engaged. And that's at Wendy Trubo MD on all the social platforms. And Colette, there's one last thing that I really want to tell people about because it's an event going on now so they can jump into it. It's called the Environmental Toxicants Autoimmunity and Chronic Diseases Summit. It's free. It's a free event. We've assembled over 40 amazing speakers. It's going from now through the 17th of April. And they can jump right in and get free access. And then people who say, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I want to see what happened on day, the other days that I missed. You can get the VIP package, which will get you like, I think there's 30 special packages and books and downloads. And then it'll also get you ongoing on-demand access to the summit. So we'll put the, we'll put the link down in the show notes, but it's really something very special for people who are looking to level up and feel freaking amazing, right? Like it's time. It's time to take back the narrative and feel good. Oh, that's a fantastic and perfect timing to yeah. go into that, to watch that after this podcast episode and yeah. it will really help people, give people guidelines on what to do next. Yeah, Wonderful. go there now. And it's free. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Wendy, it was a pleasure chatting with you today. I will put all these links in the show notes for everybody to find out more about you. And thank you for the great work you're doing in the world. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Right back at you, Colette. Thank you. Take good care of yourself and best wishes for your new book coming up in 2024. Yes, that's called Sweaty and Bitchy from Sex to Brain Function, Master Menopause and Feel Freaking Amazing. Love it. Great title. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wendy, and best wishes with that. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again to the sponsor of this episode, Mount Madonna Institute, which provides high quality professional and academic instruction and training in the fields of yoga and Ayurveda. To learn more about these programs, visit mountmadonnainstitute.org and receive a $200 discount on the Foundation's Ayurvedic Educator and Ayurvedic Health Counselor program starting in September 2023 by using the code ELEMENTS at checkout. You can find all these details in the show notes. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Wendy and please check out the show notes for all the links mentioned in this episode. Don't forget I have that upcoming discounted group cleanse starting April 21st, 2023. So click on the link in the show notes or visit my website elementshealingandwellbeing.com and for that group discounted event, go to the events tab, register and book your 90 minute consultation today so that I can tailor the cleanse to you and your life. Lifestyle. If you think that this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed the podcast, please do so. And if you'd like to rate and review it, I would really appreciate that. You can find me on social media under Elements Healing and Wellbeing on Facebook. And my new Instagram page is Elements of Ayurveda Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well and bye for now. Slongafol.